Good morning. Welcome to the World Wide Web Worship of the 7th Street Memorial Baptist Church family. We certainly welcome you to our cyber sanctuary. So thankful to God that you thought it not Robert to join us in worship this morning. We're excited about your presence. You certainly bring something to this moment that we did not have before you got here. And so we are excited about your presence. If you're worshiping with us today on the YouTube side of our cyber sanctuary, we want to thank God for you choosing to be a part of that, that side of our sanctuary. And certainly all of you who are our YouTube worshipers, we want to encourage you even now to go ahead and invite someone to worship by sharing this link with someone, texting someone to let them know that we're on, maybe even calling them up, say, hey, Sign on to YouTube. You don't have to have an account. You don't need a social media account just to be a part of worship today. Just have them to come on in and join you in the sanctuary doing this live stream so that they can be a part of our worship so that we can exalt the Lord's name together. That is the invitation we're asking that you would extend. If you're worshiping with us on the Facebook side of our cyber sanctuary, we thank God for you and for all the energy and engagement that you bring. We're excited about your presence as well. And we want to encourage you likewise to go ahead and share this worship experience, share an invitation to worship uh, with someone that you know and love by sharing this page with your page, putting it on your timeline, putting it in your newsfeed and welcoming others to be a part of our worship today. You can also welcome them right into the chat that you're in by typing the at symbol and then typing out their name and that draws them right into our worship experience. All you can do is offer the invitation. What they do with that invitation is up to them. But we're thankful to God for all of you who are evangelizing in the most kind and welcoming way possible. All you can do is invite and their inspiration is waiting for them if they so choose to use it. So we're excited about your presence today. If you're worshiping with us on the Facebook side of our sanctuary, we certainly welcome you to also hit those heart and those like buttons because it increases the bandwidth and certainly makes our stream just a bit more smooth. And so we're encouraging you to do that even now. Go ahead and practice that. Those are those automatic amens when you just can't get those fingers to type the word out. You can just hit those heart and those like buttons, and that certainly encourages us as we are worshiping during the course of our time today. But we want, no matter what side of the sanctuary you're on, we want you to engage the chat. We want you to engage it by sharing the notes and the nuggets of all that you're hearing, of the things that are sticking out to you, the things that are impacting you, the things that are meaningful for you. We want you to share those in the chat because you never know how what you're hearing and what you're experiencing from our worship will bless someone else and vice versa. We thank you for sharing those notes and those nuggets. And by extension, for those of you who love to post snippets and quotes from the sermon, we, we encourage you to do that. We just ask that you tag us so that we can be able to follow along with that conversation, add to it and even benefit from it. Uh, you never know how that will bless even beyond the sermonic moment. Uh, and continue to bless as time goes on. So we want to encourage you to engage that chat, make that energy live, continue to make, we're a charismatic church, so we like energy. And so this is the best way we can do it in a cyber setting. Uh, so we are encouraging you to do that even now. So we want you to engage your chat with notes and with nuggets as we move forward. As we move toward the sermon, we want to encourage us now to give ourselves uh, opportunity to give today according to how the Lord has blessed us to give. We certainly give in one of three ways here at the 7th Street Church. For those who uh, don't necessarily trust technological giving, you're welcome to give via U.S. Postal Mail. And certainly if you need that information as to how you can submit your love offering, your capital campaign, your tithe, or any other kind of giving that you want to offer, you can contact Pastor Cece or myself or any one of our ambassadors of love who are monitoring our major chats, and they will get that information for you and to you so that you can make sure you submit your gift in a safe, secure way. For all, the, all those who are okay with technological giving, we welcome you to certainly grab your smartphone, your smart device, and look in your app store under Givelify or Cash App. Givelify is G-I-B-E-L-I-F-Y. If you've never given via Givelify to the 7th Street Church family before, we want you to search us out by our entire church name, 7th Street Memorial Baptist Church. You should find a likeness of Pastor Cece and myself, as well as a rendering of our church facility. 
and there on you'll find some pre-selected or pre-selected uh, categories as well as amounts. We don't want you to limit yourself to those amounts. You can customize them if you need to, but certainly they're there for your quick click uh, so that you can give in an expedient fashion and ready yourself for the word today. But we want you to certainly uh, select the thing that is appropriate. And once you've received your electronic receipt, then know that we have received your giving, that the Lord is pleased and that we have secured your giving according to how you have entrusted it to us. So we thank you for that. For our cash app stewards, we welcome you to give too. And you can give using the contact information dollar sign, the number seven, lowercase th, capital S, lowercase t, r, e, e, t, capital M, capital B, capital C. And there on, you will find uh, our cash app identification. And there you can give with just a few clicks. For all of our cash app stewards, we do welcome you to go ahead and type your first and your last name in the memo, as well as where you want that giving to go so that we can be good stewards of what you've entrusted to us with just a few clicks. Once you do it and finish that transaction, it is as almost as immediate as you click in that button and we receive it and we thank you for it. If somehow I said any of that too fast, it is scrolling at the bottom of your screen. But we do want to encourage all of us to give according to how the Lord has blessed us to give because our giving is a sign of our trust. And we, we have heard Dr. Cece tell us time and again that Giving is God's love language. So if we're going to love God, we have to love God the way God loves us. And so we're encouraging you to give today according to how the Lord has blessed you to give. Well, we're getting ready to move toward the word today, but we certainly uh, want to uh, welcome all of you again who are just signing in into our worship experience. Want to encourage you to go ahead and say good morning. Let us know that you're on here. Let us know you're in the sanctuary. Do something to get your name up on the screen so that we can see you. If you're on Facebook, we want you to go ahead and hit those heart and those like buttons. Let us know that you're out there and that you're following along. If you're in YouTube, we want you to engage that chat in a vigorous way so that we can certainly keep all of the energy going strong on both sides of our chat. But we certainly want you to be a part of our worship. We don't want this to be a monologue or a lecture. We want this to be a dialogical worship experience where we talk back even in a cyber sanctuary. So we thank you all for doing that. Well, it is the month of May and Dr. Cece and myself are gonna take a little break. We're taking a vacation. We need some time off. We've been going strong for two solid years, uh, every week, week in and week out. And we just need some time to de-stress and decompress. And we're asking that you indulge us and give us that space and give us that time, but fret not because powerful word is being prepared for you even as we speak. We are excited about the word that has been prepared for this particular Lord's Day. And we're thankful for the powerful preacher that the Lord has sent our way today to bless our souls, to change our lives, and to prick us into purposefulness. We're asking now that you would perk up, sit at your tent gate, ready yourself for the power that the Lord is going to release in this moment, because there is a word for you. We want you to ready yourself even now as we have the presentation and introduction of our preacher for the day. We welcome to the preaching moment someone who is no stranger to the 7th Street family. Reverend Shamara Haynes is the pastor and founding visionary of the Greater Joy Community Church right here in Richmond, Virginia. Pastor Haynes was licensed and ordained in 2010 at the Swansboro Baptist Church under the leadership of the now retired Reverend Dr. Herbert R. Plummer Sr. Under Dr. Plummer's leadership, guidance, and mentorship, she developed her talents and spiritual gifts to serve in various ministry roles, including associate minister, director of youth ministry, and minister of music. Pastor Haynes has earned a Bachelor of Arts degree in Criminology and Criminal Justice, as well as a Master of Divinity degree from the Samuel DeWitt Proctor School of Theology, where she graduated with honors, both at Virginia Union University. In the community, Pastor Haynes is a member of the nonprofit organization Richmonders Involved to Strengthen Our Communities, or RISC for short. 
This organization engages congregations throughout Richmond, Henrico, and Chesterfield counties that work cooperatively to serve critical community problems. Pastor Shamar Haynes is supported in ministry by her loving husband, Deacon Antonio Haynes, and their amazing children, Kayla Brianna and Amari Shante. Pastor Haynes, we welcome you, and we know that God is going to use you in a mighty way to bless us today. We are praying with and for you. Preach, Pastor Haynes. Preach! Well, good morning, 7th Street family and friends. Grace and peace be unto you from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Certainly give an honor to your amazing pastor and co-pastor, the Reverend Micah and C.C. Jackson. I am grateful for the invitation and hallelujah, happy to share with you all on today. Come on, let's bow in prayer and ask the Lord our God to bless our time in worship together. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you, O God for life, health, and for strength. We thank you uh, for your kind terms and for your well-directed mercy. God, we thank you for your keeping power. You've protected us from danger seen and unseen. You've kept our hearts beating, blood flowing, brain firing, lungs expanding, blood running warm in our veins, oh God. And we exclaim like the hymn writer, oh, to be kept. We thank you, dear Lord. I thank you for allowing me the privilege of sharing your truth. I feel so unworthy, but as you've done so many times before, God, I pray that you would do it again, that you would look beyond my faults and meet every one of us at the point of our needs. Spirit of the living God, have your way. Fall fresh. It's not in my manuscript. Put it in my mouth so that we might hear directly from heaven's throne room on today. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray and give thanks for these things and all things. Amen. Hallelujah. And amen again. Today, family, I want us to examine a very familiar passage of scripture. Open your Bible to Psalm 23. Psalm 23. I'm going to read it in its entirety from the King James Version on today, and we'll shine the sermonic spotlight specifically on verses five and six. While this text may be familiar, I pray that God gives us fresh insight, even in a familiar prayer. The word of the Lord reads this way. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This morning, I want to preach with this thought in mind. The shepherd delivers. Yeah, the shepherd delivers. Psalm 23 is one of the most well-known and best loved of the Psalms. Charles Spurgeon rightly calls it the pearl of the Psalms. For that matter, Psalm 23 is one of the most cherished passages in all of sacred scripture. The young and the old know it. Seasoned saints, new believers, and irreligious people are familiar with it. It is memorized by children, read at sick beds, recited in weddings, preached at funerals, and consulted in council. In fact, Dr. Charles L. Allen, in his book, God's Psychiatry, went so far as to suggest that if people would simply just read through Psalm 23 seven times before going to bed, there would be less emotional breakdowns. Without a doubt, Psalm 23 is the greatest of the Psalms and one of the most inspiring poems ever written. It is known around the world and has been loved throughout the ages, yet I contend that Psalm 23 is not a psalm that everyone can sing. (laughs) Psalm 23 is the exclusive testimony of one who has a personal relationship with the living God. David sings, the Lord is my shepherd. I 
shall not want. Psalm 23 is the sheep's testimony about his shepherd. And in verses five through six, the sheep testifies of the shepherd's goodness by telling us how the shepherd delivers. Here it is, here it is. God's care for God's people manifests in God's rescuing us from every adverse circumstance. That's it. That, that's the whole sermon. God rescues God's people. That God will get you out of whatever you are in, and he does it in four ways. First of all, he does it in front of my enemies. Text says, he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. David here takes two pictures and lays them alongside one another. One of the pictures uh, that, that has been throughout the Psalm of this shepherd and the sheep, but verses five and six also use the picture of a host and guests in the host home. The host throws a feast, sponsors a party, and invites some guests. One of the guests is the person who writes the Psalm, David, and those of us who are the people of God, we're invited to the feast. But the other invited guests are the antagonists, the enemies, the naysayers, the negative people, and the life of the initial invited guests. And what God does is invite the annoyances to the feast so that they can be the audience of the abundance that God will provide to those that belong to him. This is why Jesus says strange things. Y'all know, know Jesus says strange things sometimes. Yeah, strange things like if you want to be exalted, then you've got to learn how to be humble. If, if you want to be great in the kingdom of God, you've got to learn how to be the most servant-like, slave-like person in the kingdom. He says strange things like, if you want to receive a lot, it means you have to give more. And Jesus says something very strange. He says here, what I want you to do with your enemies, don't lay them out, don't fuss, don't fight, don't give them a piece of your mind, don't write them a, a negative email, don't send a nasty text, but here's what I want you to do, love them. <laughs> That's what the Bible says. Do good to them and pray for them because they are the audience and the affirmation that I am preparing a table before you. Listen good, y'all, because sometimes God does not bless you to bless you. Mm -mm. Sometimes God blesses you to bother them. Did you hear what I said this morning? Let me say it again. God doesn't always bless you to bless you, but sometimes he blesses you to bother them. Sometimes he wants to show Satan that you are his child. And, and though Satan has thrown everything, including the kitchen sink at you to stop you, to distract you, to delay you, to destroy you, to hinder you, to discourage you, to make you quit. Sometimes God sets up a table, blesses that table, opens a door, makes a way, manifests a miracle, does something supernatural just so he can wag his finger in the devil's face and say, that's my child. And if I choose to bless him or her, there is nothing you can do about it. He, he prepares the table. Oh, but there's further good news in this. It's, it's not just the house guests. It's also the shepherd and the sheep. The table is also a picture of the mesa, the M-E-S-A, the mesa. It's a Spanish word. And even in some African languages, mesa is the high flat ground that the sheep would graze on in ancient times and even still today. The summer, the shepherd would take his sheep up to that high flat ground that they called the mesa or literally translated a table. And he would leave the sheep in the cool seasons, in the green pastures beside the still waters in the hands of other shepherds. And the chief shepherd would then go and take the dangerous journey up the high hills to the table ground and aerate the soil and salt the ground so that when the grass grew in the summer, it had all the nutrients necessary for the sheep's health and survival. The shepherd would then go back to the green pastures, back to the still waters where the sheep had grazed that ground just about empty. And then he would lead them through a dangerous journey up to a higher ground that the shepherd had already prepared. This is why the psalm progresses as it does. He makes me lie down in green pastures beside still waters. And then he takes me through the valley 
of the shadow of death. He takes me through the low, dark place because the path to high ground must also go through no places. I don't know if you're catching what I'm throwing at you this morning, but it's absolutely necessary for me to get through the low, dark place so I can come up to the high ground that's already been prepared to me. For me, this, this is why if you're in a low place, you need to keep walking. Yeah, because he is progressing you toward a higher, more blessed condition that he's already prepared. So that sometimes it's not that you are not ready for the blessing. It's that sometimes the blessing is not ready for you. The shepherd has to go ahead of you to get the next job ready for when you show up or, or get the right relationship ready for when you show up or, or get the house ready ready for when you show up or get the right loan officer ready for when you show up so that when you get to the high ground, you're not doing any work. It's already prepared. He prepares this table before me and he does it in the presence of my enemies. He does it y'all in front of my enemies, but he also does it. Watch the second piece of this. He does it in spite of my environment. Mark it down. Mark it down. He does it in spite of my environment. You anoint my head with oil. Every shepherd carried with him a horn of oil as he led the sheep. Oil has several uses. It's multifaceted. Sometimes the sheep would get congested. And, and when the shepherd heard the wheezing of the sheep or the difficulty that the sheep would have breathing because of the spices that were mixed in the oil itself, he would pour some on the face and the head of the sheep because it opened up the breathing passages of the sheep. It was the ancient world's vapor rub, if you will, because sometimes life tries to choke you out, but the shepherd knows how to make you breathe. <laughs> that, that's just one use, but also the sheep would graze in the grass, and, and, and there were these sticks and rocks and things that would cut or bruise the sheep, and so when the shepherd saw that the sheep were cut or bruised simply by trying to graze, he would pour oil on the head of the sheep because the oil would help to ease the pain and speed up the healing process. God knows because he's watching you intimately, closely, and personally when life wounds you how to pour oil on you. Yeah, he, he he knows how to pour oil on you so that, that it will he speed up the healing process. And I'm trying to talk to somebody here that's been wounded by life today. I'm saying uh, that the shepherd brought you here today specifically to pour some oil on your face because things have cut you and hurt you and damaged you. But your shepherd knows how to put what is necessary on you so that you can heal again, so that you can feel like yourself again so that you can get your joy back again and have a smile again and learn how to enjoy life again. The shepherd puts oil on you. I I've got another use. Wait a minute. I've got another use. The shepherd also knows that the sheep are putting their head in the grass and, and they're not the only critters in the pasture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but whenever you have good pasture, You'll also have snakes in the grass. God help me to preach now. Now, now snakes like to bite sheep, but they hate oil. So, so he would anoint the head of the sheep so that the snake would bite the sheep. It would be repelled by the oil. Have you ever had folk who didn't like you and, and they can't tell you why they don't like you? They just don't like you. It ain't got nothing to do with you, baby. It's the oil. That's why they don't invite you out. That's why they don't hang out with you. That's why they try to tear you down. That's why they talk about you behind your back. It's not your fault. It's the oil. Oh, somebody shout, it's the oil. It's the oil. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's another use for this oil. There's another use for this oil uh, uh, that, 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 that during the rut, during uh, the mating season, yeah, the males and the rams would butt heads in order to establish dominance and a pecking order as it relates to mating. And they would do this and sometimes their horns would get locked and they wouldn't be able to separate themselves and two rams could die because of the conflict. 
or, or one would be stronger than the other and, and he would damage the other and would wound him beyond repair. So the shepherd would know the season and pour oil on the heads of those rams. And, and when they would butt the, and, and hurt each other, they just slip off and not lock each other up. Listen, listen, if you're part of the human family, in relationship to other people in the human family, let me go ahead and help some folk out and say uh, uh, that say I, I don't join church because there's so much conflict in church. It's it's so much mess in church, or or I'm never getting in another relationship, or or I can't trust nobody because they always hurt me, they damage me. Let me help you with something here today. You are going to have conflict with other human beings, but the oil will allow those things that would damage you to slip off of you because the conflict is inevitable, but the damage does not have to be so. Can I tell you something else about this oil? Let me tell you something else about this oil. Flies love the nasal passages of the sheep. That They love to fly in there and lay their eggs in the sheep's nostrils. Those eggs are hatched and the larva would live in there and, and they would bother the sheep and the sheep would get agitated. It would itch and, and he couldn't scratch it. Have, have you ever been there when, when there was an itch you could not scratch and the irritant he couldn't get to? Uh, so, so it would irritate him so much that, that he would then begin to rub his nose against a rock. Yeah, trying to give him some relief and it would hurt him so much. It would hurt him uh, because he was trying to help himself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have you ever been there? He he went to a tree to get some resolve and, and he would hurt himself when he was only trying to help himself. But the shepherd is attentive. Watch me here to the behavior and the attitude of the sheep. And he knows that the sheep's nature is to be calm, cool, and collective. But if the sheep was agitated, uh, there must be something visible on the, not visible on the outside, but there's something that's going on on the inside. The shepherd knew the sheep's behavior. And when he saw the sheep irritated or agitated with no external stimuli, he would simply pour oil on the sheep because it would ease the itching and ultimately expel the unwanted visitors. Let me talk here for a minute because sometimes things are going on in your head and going on in your heart that folk can't see on the outside. Come on, talk to me here. Sometimes you cry and folk ask what's wrong and you can't tell them because it's something they can't see from the outside. Come on, discouragement. And there's no real reason to be discouraged, depressed. And you've got no reason to be depressed. Come on, downtrodden. And you don't know why you're down. But, but the shepherd knows that what folk can't see on the outside requires a solution to help you on the inside. And so he pours oil on your face to help you get rid of everything that's bothering you that people can't see. And I'm so glad that the the shepherd knows what's going on with me on the inside because sometimes y'all I try to explain it to mama and mama don't get it have you been there you try to tell daddy daddy don't get it best friends don't get it sometimes my spouse doesn't get it but the shepherd knows how to apply the oil to my life <laughs> somebody shout oil yeah you ought to shout oil thank God for the oil wait a minute Wait a minute. So watch the issues. You, you, you've got congestion because of the environment. You've got sticks and rocks cutting you and bruising you in the environment. You've got snakes in the grass in the environment. You've got sheep butting heads because of the environment. You've got flies in the environment. You've got all of these issues that are environmental, but you need only one solution. God help me to preach oil. Oil, oil is symbolic of the Holy Spirit and God's power and endowment being poured on the life of the believer so that every day you wake up, you'll say, God, I don't know what issues are going on in my environment, but if you just give me the power of the Holy Ghost, I know that I can overcome whatever goes on in my environment. Hallelujah. Yes, he 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 delivers me all and he does it in front of my enemies. He he delivers me and he does it in spite of my environment. Here it is. The shepherd delivers me also from the possibility of emptiness. 
Watch it. It's in your text. It's in the Bible. And here it is. My cup. K, K, uh, King James Version says, run it over. Verb in the Hebrew speaks of something consistent and perpetual. Not, not it runs over and then stops. Not, not, not it ran over or it will run over, but it doesn't stop running over. Hear me good. God has more picture than you can handle in your cup. Listen, good. This, this is only possible here. Here's the gospel in the 23rd Psalm. This is only possible because there has been an exchange of cups at the table of judgment. There are two cups. There's two cups. There's a cup of wrath due to those who violate the law of God. And, and there's a cup of favor and blessing due to those who perfectly obey the law of God without any violation ever. There are two categories in the human family. Those who have violated the law of God and he who perfectly kept the entirety of the law of God without any fault or blemish. All of the human family is on the side with the cup of wrath and only one. The Lord Jesus Christ is on the side of the cup of blessing and favor that is given to those that perfectly obey. But in the Garden of Gethsemane, the Father switched those cups. So to those who deserve the cup of wrath, he gave the cup of favor and blessing. And to the one who deserved the cup of blessing, he gave the cup of wrath. The cup of wrath, y'all, was so nasty, so disgusting, so vile. Jesus actively prayed out of his mouth, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. The Father said, no, sir. No, sir, you've got to drink it. And on, on the cross of Calvary, Jesus downed the cup of wrath till it was empty so that now those of us who believe in what he has done only and ever and always enjoy the cup of favor and the cup of blessing, even though we do not deserve it. Now, now that shouts me. <laughs> that, 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 that would shout me if I had heard that. But let me give you some better news on today. It's not just uh, that the cup of blessing is full. It's the cup of blessing is running over. <laughs> So that when I'm blessed, God blesses me with such blessing that it then spills over into the lives of people who are near me, connected to me, love me, close to me. My children are blessed because my cup runs over. My spouse is blessed because my cup runs over. The job is still there because my cup runs over. I wish you lift up your hands right where you are. I wish you shout with a loud voice right in the seat that you're because God gives me too much to drink by myself. So I'm going to let what's on me, let it flow over. <laughs> I'm done. Hallelujah. I'm done. He, he, he delivers me in front of my enemies. He delivers me in spite of my environment. He delivers me from the possibility of emptiness. My cup runs over. But he also delivers me until and throughout eternity. Watch verse six. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Watch it. Watch it. Here it is. Uh, goodness and mercy. Goodness and mercy are not two things in the text. They are a poetic device called a hendiadis. A hendiadis is using two words connected by conjunction to relay one thought. It's like saying I'm nice and warm. It's really one concept with a modifier. So, so I don't have two things following me. I've got one thing following me and it's described by the other thing. What's following me here is mercy. Now, mercy is the loyal love of God, God's predisposition to love you in spite of you. And, and how mercy is described is that it's good. The text Describes it as good mercy. That term goodness is used here as a descriptor or a modifier of mercy to describe mercy. That term goodness is not a measure of quality, but it's more of an aesthetic. It's, it's not saying that mercy can be bad. It's, it's not saying that there's such a thing as good mercy, mediocre mercy, and bad mercy, because all mercy is mercy. But it says, when I look at mercy, it looks good. It 
it looks good to me. My, my aesthetic assessment of the beauty of mercy is that it's a pretty mercy. <laughs> it's, it's a beautiful mercy. Now, now, now here's what shouts me. The term there is it follows me. Follow doesn't just mean I'm walking and mercy's behind me. We're, we're not in a single foul line. That, that term mercy follows. Follow in the Hebrew, mercy means to, to pursue with the intent to overtake. That, 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 that word mercy in Hebrew means to pursue with the intent to overtake. Here's the best picture I can paint for you for what mercy really means. It means mercy is stalking me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mercy is hiding in the bushes waiting on you to get home. Mercy followed you to the restaurant last night and sat at the table next to you to make sure you didn't choke on your food. Here it is. Mercy was in the club with you. Yeah, you, you were on the dance floor, but mercy was posted up against the wall to make sure that when the shooting started, you made it out safely. Mercy is following you home so that when you find your way home, you make it without accident. Yeah, yeah. And you escape with your life. Mercy is stalking you. And it didn't stop when you got saved. Mercy has been stalking you all the days of your life. You ought to testify that the only reason you're still here is because your sovereign stalker has been watching you all the days of your life. When you were a barefoot baby, mercy all the days of your life. When you were a know-it-all teenager, mercy, all the days of your life. When you were a reckless young adult, mercy, all the days of your life. When you're struggling and striving to make ends meet, to raise a family, to excel in your profession, mercy, all the days of your life. Listen, when you live long enough for the hair on your head to start turning gray, you can declare mercy all the days of your life. I'm done. I'm, I'm done. But if the shepherd has been providing for you, if the shepherd has been keeping you alive, if the shepherd has been guiding your life, brought you through low valleys, showed you off in front of your enemies, put oil on your head, caused your cup to overflow. You can't be a sometimey Christian. No, no, no. When I start at verse five, I'm a guest in the host house. But when I end verse six, I've moved in as a permanent resident. That simply means, y'all, that I've decided to stick with God no matter what comes my way. Can I go ahead and testify for you that some folk would rather have houses and land. Some folk choose silver and gold. These things they treasure and forget about their soul. But I've decided to make Jesus my choice. Permit me to warn you that the road gets rough and the going gets tough and the hills are hard to climb. But I started out a long time ago and there is no doubt in my mind I've decided to make Jesus my choice. In other words, I'm sticking with Jesus, y'all. Is there anybody glad that you've got a good shepherd? If you're glad, you ought to testify. The shepherd watches over me. The shepherd walks with me and talks with me. The shepherd woke me up this morning. The shepherd started me on my way. The shepherd mended my broken heart. The shepherd held my mind together. The shepherd forgave me when I did wrong. The shepherd climbed up on an old cross took nails in his hands and spikes in his feet and a spear in his side. My shepherd hung his head in the locks of his shoulders and died on Calvary's cross. My shepherd was buried in a borrowed tomb but early on a Sunday morning. My shepherd got up with all power in his hands and if you've got breath in your body you ought to testify. I've got a mighty good shepherd who knows how to deliver me. The grass withers, the flower fades, but we can shout today because the word of our God will last forever. Let's pray. Father, we trust you. We look to you, God. We worship you. We thank you, oh God, for your keeping power. You are our deliverer. Lord, just as you have delivered throughout your word, I pray that you would deliver us throughout your world. 
for every believer, every Christian, every person who needs you to show yourself strong, needs you to show yourself mighty, needs you to show yourself as the Savior you are, God, do it. In Jesus' name we pray. Deliver our families, our homes, deliver us on our jobs, deliver us in our finances and in our struggles. I lift up, oh God, those who come to the cyber sanctuary on today looking for a Savior. God, would you knock on the door of that heart even now? And I pray that they will answer and let you in. That's our prayer. In the matchless, marvelous, majestic name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. And amen again. Listen, I've got a question. I've got a question this morning. Are you connected to the shepherd? <laughs> do, 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 do you know Christ and the pardon of your sins? Do you need a community of believers like Seven Street? to seek to pray for you, encourage you, and to build one another up. Listen, if you're not connected to Christ or if you need Christ Church, now is the time. Today is the day. Wherever you are, I want you to connect to Christ and or to this community called 7th Street. Listen, they would love to be your church. Pastor Michael would love to be your pastor. I don't believe anything happens by accident. Your steps were ordered today. You're in the right place at the right time. I want you to type the word join in the comments. I want you to type that word join. Whatever platform you're streaming this on now, type that word join and the ambassadors of love will reach out to you about the next steps. Again, just text that word join. The ambassadors of love are waiting in the wings to show you just how much 7th Street loves to love you. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you and may you always testify to the delivering power of our shepherd. Stay tuned, real quick, stay tuned for 7th Street announcements. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, 7th Street family and friends. Listen, y'all, the pastors thought they were going on vacation and we weren't going. Mm -mm. We on vacation, too. On location. We don't know what the location <laughs> is, but we're there. See, we, we were have a day off. See, they wrote their name in the sand. We just came on out here. Uh -huh. we, got our, we got our glasses with our beverages. <laughs> We got our beach ball and our sand bucket. We are ready. We are ready. You got flowers. You see my flowers? Oh, okay, I got our flowers. You okay, got our tabs. We are ready yes, we for are. our May 2022 announcements. Govern yourselves accordingly. accordingly. And let's get right into it, you guys, with what? Our, our May, May birthday. birthday. Woo! Happy birthday, Woo! Happy birthday. Yes, we have to give it up, y'all, because May birthdays are small. Yeah. We got to cheer, 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 cheer. Happy birthday! Woo! And we have <laughs> Zenobia Jackson and Lavelle Montgomery. Yes, yes, yes. Happy birthday, y'all. Happy birthday, ladies. 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 Happy birthday, we got our cups. You see that? It's got the Sun Street on it. It's turn around and see. Look, it's got my name on it. You want one? Go and get you one so it can have your name on But you know, we also had to bring our mugs. You know, we love our mugs, ladies. We love our mugs. Listen. With the tribe. And we got that tribe of who? Joseph. The tribe of Joseph. Listen, go to the online store. Pick y'all up a cup with your name on it, a mug with your cup with your name and your tribe on it. Shop at the online store. The money goes back to us. That's right. Go and get you some stuff. That's it. And if you are, we just want to pray for some of these people on our prayer list. Prayer list. Lord have mercy. We have Mary Jane Day, Joanne Harris, Bonnie Hunter, Serena Johnson, and Aretha Riri Jefferson. We want to send prayer and love. To all of you from all of the all of Seven Street to Seven Street family and friends. And if you are in need of prayer, you can reach out to www.sevenstreet.org and someone will be available to pray with you and for you. We love y'all. We love y'all and we're praying for you. That's it. 
And this is the Lighthouse Literacy Project. The Lighthouse Literacy Project is the project of our very own Reverend Lucy Weston. Listen, Reverend Lucy and her family are still collecting books. So if you have some books or want to donate some books to promote literacy to those in rural areas who need them, you can reach out to Reverend Lucy at Lighthouse Literacy 91 at gmail.com. That's Lighthouse Literacy 91 at gmail.com. That's it. Uh oh, whoa, please. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. And home is where we are trying to go. Absolutely. And we just want to thank everyone who participated in our capital campaign in 2022 and 2022 as well. We just want to thank everyone. That is part of our phase. That was phase one. And there's so many names, and we're just going to get right into it with our 2021 and 2022 Believers. Yes, okay. We have Leonard Beasley, Deacon Damian Brooks, Minister Tashira Brown, Reverend Tonya Burris, Michelle Coleman, George Conyers, Chastity Cox, Deacon Diane Cox, Greg Day Sr., Brittany Donald, Desiree Hall Edwards, Minister Keith Branderson, Martina Hall, Trustee Joanne High School, Ashley Hopkins, Thelma Jackson, Zenobia Jackson, Aretha Riri Jefferson, Denise Jeter, Trustee Emma Johnson, Bernadette Johnson, Lakeisha Johnson, Shane Johnson, Serena Johnson, Minister in Training Stefan Johnson, Latoya Kenny, Laura Law, Lavert Marshall, Amber Mays, Melanie Miller, D. Moss, Minister in Training LaVoice Newby, Sandra Newby Johnson, Angela Owens, Jonathan Owens, Lee Peeler, Alice Powell, Shay Redden, Jay Lamar Robinson, Lashana Taylor, Valerie Turner, Dr. Stephanie Wilkes, and Pastor Nikki Wright. All right, and we are moving on to our 2021 2022 achievers Yay! Adrian Brown, Minister Gloria Kenny, Joanne Harris, Reverend Walia Hawkins. Angela Owens and Marsha with a spoon. Yes, and now we have come to our 2021, 2022 yes. leader. Come on, leader. Come on, yes. And we even got a new name. Yes. We heard on here. Okay. So let's get these names Deacon Annette Banks Connors, Trustee Alonzo Brooks, Stephanie Brown, Deborah Carlisle, Crystal Holmes, Cordell Green, Reverend Lucy Hudson, Clarissa Jackson. Assistant Pastor Dr. Cece Jackson, Pastor Micah Jackson, Reverend Linda Johnson, Sanika Leilan, Nakiba Law, Trustee Malayaka Mason, Angela Owens, Cynthia Simpson, Minister Edward Taylor, Deacon Patricia Williams, and Stephanie Wright. And our youth leaders, Yay. our youth 2021-2022 leaders, starting us off is Serenity Kenny Agee, Anaya Barrett, Khalil Vaughn, Mia Brooks, Raven Brooks, Jerry Butler, Kamari Canada, Naisha Donald, Key Asia Jackson, Kamarion Jeter, Jabari Johnson, Lashane Johnson, Joshua Johnson, Omari Johnson, Ian Leilon, Madison Light, Mackenzie Light, Anaya Mason, Zion Mason, Alani Miller, Ariana Miller, Nuri Rose, Taylor Rose, Asira Rose, Michael Rose and Gabriel Rose. Yes, and our 2021 ministry partner. Yes. We thank you guys so much for sewing into us thank you so much. on our journey home. Yes. And that is Pastor Diane Mosby and Anointed New Life Baptist Church yes. and Pastor Wade Brunji and M3 Church. Thank, thank you, you guys so much. So much. Yes. And thank you to those who gave in memory of a loved one, those who gave in memory of Dr. and Lady CBF Enton, Trustee Annie Brown, Deacon Mary Gaddy, Deacon Harrell Garland, Jeremiah Gilliam, Sage Gilliam, Shyla Gilliam, Deacons William and Naomi Graham, Deacon Jennifer Key, Octavia Johnson, Lavinia Beanie Lewis, Deacon Zephyr Morris, Deacon Burley Wright, and Trustee Bernie Sprite, we miss them so much. All right, everybody, mm -hmm. and we are about to jump into phase two. Y'all see the new building? Yes, 
Isn't it gorgeous? Yeah, it's just a reminder of what it's going to look like on the front. Mm -hmm. And then a reminder of what it's going to look like on the back. Look at that. Isn't it beautiful? It's beautiful. Gorgeous. All right, Lee. Give let's it to go. All right. Let's we kind of introduced Lisa. Let's go. Because <laughs> we excited. We are excited. This is phase two. Again, we thank everyone for phase two, phase one, but now we are in phase two, you guys. Now, in order to do that, in order for us to get home, we needed to be fully functional. We want to be able to sit somewhere and praise the Lord. Okay, we're going to be somewhere to sit. We're going to need somewhere to sit, but guess what? When you get up in here, you can be a part of that. That's you right. Can you can, and guess what I heard? You can get a role. You gonna get, get a role? I'm gonna get a role. I, I told you that's so gonna happen. We're gonna have our role. We're gonna have our role. Have, okay. If you want your role in your eyes, let us know. Yeah, let us know. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have good. We're gonna have some good church in our role. Good church on our role. Our okay. roles might uh, be knocked down. Let's go. Go ahead, Lisa. <laughs> but look at that. Look at this view from the balcony. Of the sanctuary, right? Beautiful. And look, I mean, look at the monitors. We need all of that for yes. folks who may not be able to see when they're all the way back there. We got the monitors, speakers. There's so much that we need. Look, air conditioning. We need the bathrooms to work. Because we, we need all kinds of stuff. We can't worship and be, in, you know, yeah. and shouting things in the building be hot. So, <laughs> yeah, we need help with we that. Need some, we mm -hmm. need some air. Yes. And then if we look at this other shot of the sanctuary, look at this. It's beautiful. And if you think you can't be a part, that's wrong. You can you can walk in and say, you know what? I was a part of that. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. The bookstore. Check out the bookstore. Hello. You know, right. and again, you can go online and get your items, or you can just go ahead in the bookstore when you come to church. Store. Come mm -hmm. on. So get ready for phase two, everybody. Get ready. Get excited and yes. get ready like we are. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. And now we've come to what? Our ambassadors of love. Ambassadors of love. Of love. Of love. <laughs> <laughs> the ambassadors of love. We are stationed on our streaming platforms, which consists of YouTube and Facebook. And we are there if you need prayer, yes. if you would like to join our congregation, if you want to be baptized, whatever it is that you want to reach out to one of us for inside of those platforms. You can. We're okay. there. Yeah. We are there. Shout and carry it on. You can catch yeah. us. I'm telling you, you can catch us because we're there. Because we, we, <laughs> we are on there. And we have Reverend Tonya Burrs, Sister Sandra Newby Johnson, Sister Latoya Joy Kenny right yeah. here, Sister Lee Killer right here, yeah. and Sister Stephanie Wright. So again, if you see one of our names, reach out to us and we can get your information to the appropriate person um, that can reach out to you. And if you would like to be a part of the Ambassadors of Love, you can reach out to Reverend Cece at 7th Street dot org. Come on and join me. Come on. Come and join me. <laughs> All right, everybody. And if you have anything you need to add to the announcements, you need to change your address or if you need to um, get a message to Pastor Reverend Cece, you can do that at clerk at 7th Street dot org. Yes. And let me just say this. This has come to the time of our seven minutes of power and prayer. And prayer. And prayer. Listen, and we just first want to give it up to our ministry all-stars yes. during our Lenten season. Usually we do have our power of prayer every Wednesday at 7 a.m., at 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. on our Instagram and um, our telephone number. But this month, you know, well, this Lenten season has been great yes. because we have had it every day, Monday every through Friday, day. giving Monday it to us. They okay? have been amazing. 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 So if you would like to uh, get into our seven minutes of power and prayer, when pray, wait a minute, if prayer is in your posture, mm -hmm. power is in your position. That's I think I said that right. Said, right. Listen, okay, because that's my that's what my favorite. Okay, I'm gonna do that. Okay, that. <laughs> <laughs> and if you need to get a message to um us for announcements, or you need to reach out to Pastor and Reverend Cece to get a message to them, change your address, you can do that at clerk at 7 streetorg Yes. Oh, look, 
You come to the end. That was a good time. Mm-hmm. Okay, and we we love y'all. We want y'all to have an amazing, have an amazing day. May. Okay, <laughs> now we're about to enjoy ourselves okay. on location. On our location. Okay. On our vacation. Okay, we location. We want to love you. We love you. Have a great month of May. Yes, an amazing and blessed month of May. We love y'all. Bye. 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 <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, 7th Street family, I pray that you've been blessed by the word on today. I pray that you walk away from this worship encounter with confidence and knowing that nothing can happen that you and God can't handle together. Your shepherd knows how to deliver you in front of your enemies, despite your environment. He knows how to deliver you from emptiness and throughout eternity. Now, may the Lord our God bless and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord our God lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace both now and forever. And the people of God who are glad that our shepherd delivers said together, amen. God bless you, 7th Street family and friends. Thank you for watching and worshiping with us today. Peace. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. So on behalf of our pastor, Reverend Micah Jackson, our assistant pastor, Dr. Cece Jackson, and the entire 7th Street family. We're so glad you worship with us today. And we invite you to declare with us over your life that this shall be our year of manifestation. Have an amazing week. And remember, we are the 7th Street Memorial Baptist Church family, and we love